this one? Yes. So look, Poppy, look, can you see? This is where Daddy's going to go. Oh. He's going to go and climb this mountain. <laughs> My name is Julian Bayliss. I'm a conservation scientist. I'm an ecologist. My job is to try and help conserve and protect areas that are not previously under any form of official protection. Daddy's going a big aeroplane. I saw this site through satellite imagery, and I've never, ever come across a site like this. What was interesting about this site was the surrounding land was heavily cultivated, and then the crater containing rainforest was very dense and intact. And I thought that was a little bit strange because there should be evidence of human disturbance. So then I thought, well, maybe actually you cannot get to the forest. Therefore, potentially, this forest has never had any human interference. To actually find a site with no human interference gives us this unique chance to investigate and measure aspects of climate change. Okay, can Daddy help you? Yes. The speed at which climate change is occurring at the moment, there is only one variable that wasn't there before, and that's the number of human beings that are on this planet. We're planting a forest. Oh, Daddy's hand. Daddy, please make a tree. My hope for this expedition to Mount Liko is that it'll help us understand various aspects of climate change. across, it has a crater, it has a rim, and it has a basin of rainforest. It has these very smooth granite edges that rise up to over half a kilometer. It looks a little bit like a fortress. Bon dia, bon dia, come Everybody, welcome to this expedition to Mount Liko. We've got a great team together, lots of specialities, lots of nationalities, uh, young and old and uh, everything in between. <laughs> the two climbers, Jules Lyons, one of the best free climbers in the UK, and Mike Robinson, also one of the best free climbers in the UK, have been rigging the climb at 125 meters for the last couple of days now, and it's basically ready. They're gonna finish it off this morning, and then we're gonna start sending people up so good, I think this is going to be a really interesting expedition. I think it's going to be a really exciting expedition. Um, I'm expecting to find lots of new stuff, new species, hopefully, um, and make this trip really worthwhile. Anyway, everybody's welcome. Thank you very much.
Look at all these beautiful butterflies. Beautiful. Very, very nice to be here. As a scientist, I'm very lucky to be able to visit all these largely unexplored natural areas such as these rainforests and to spend time in them and to see the magic and the beauty that they have to offer and to show people. We can't camp up here unless we find some water. But I, I noticed from down the base camp there's a massive seepage thing coming off the cliff over that side. So we can find we can find the source of that. Have a camp nearby there. Should be good. Okay, let's go to this flat bit up here. Well, this would make a lovely campsite. Look at it, beautiful. Nice on the edge, nice and open. Perfect. Okay, let's set up camp. We have the best scientists in the world on this expedition. We have a truly international and global team. There's nobody being paid for this expedition. Everybody who is here is here because of the desire to conserve these places. Done. Home. <laughs> okay, up the hill. Are you exhausted? Not exhausted, excited. <laughs> Climate change will change habitats. Nothing works in isolation. So if the climate changes, then the forest changes. The plants change, the animals change. When you've got human interference on top of these habitats, it's very difficult to actually distinguish between what is actually relating to climate change and what is actually relating to human interference. So here we have a very unique experience with a forest which has had no human interference, and so therefore any changes that we find on Mount Lico compared to other forests that we've looked at will be down to climate change. To have a good baseline to compare it to. So it'd be like, this is the carbon that should be in the forest. And then compare that to other sites that are disturbed. We can see effectively what the human influence is and add that to the man-made climate change part of the equation. Because it's not the forest releasing carbon, it's us causing the forest to release carbon. We're looking to maybe through the soil cores, go down, go back in history, and see if we can get some estimation on what the climate was like maybe a thousand years ago here. We're looking for a history, a bit of a storyline between then and now. The other major aspects of this expedition will be to look for new species to science. Yeah. Can I pass me a bucket? So I have an idea. There's a bucket right here. See how you're doing. Oh, not so bad. We put them level there. with the soil. So what we're doing is putting in buckets so that we can catch more vertebrates. So any shrew we get up here is almost certainly going to be uh, new to science. So any shrew I will be very excited about. The world is full of secrets and we have not discovered a fraction of them. And the more new species a particular site has, the more importance you can then attribute to that site and that can then leverage what's protecting these sites. The idea is to raise the butterfly trap as high as possible and then you bait it with a fermenting banana mix and that attracts the canopy flying butterflies such as your Caraxes. If we could find a new species of Caraxes that would be as big as it gets in the butterfly world. That's like finding a new monkey. too far off. This time, probably tomorrow, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. And I can almost guarantee we'll have butterflies in there.
They are very magical creatures. Most of the time, I just like watching them. We only have a limited amount of time in the forest on Mount Liko to discover as much as we can. It's going to be intense work. Yeah. Let's see yeah. No, 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 no. So that's the first one. I've been lucky enough to find quite a few new species over the years including many butterflies. And for my daughter's first birthday, I named a butterfly after her, Poppyana, Simatoe Belisai Poppyana. My beautiful daughter, Poppy, she's very inquisitive. So she says, Daddy's going to the mountain, or Daddy's going to the forest. So she already knows where I am. It is a unique experience to see the wonders of nature, see the magic of nature. And for my daughter not to be able to experience that would make me, makes me very sad. It is a possibility that she won't because it is possible that these sites won't be there. They're just being destroyed through climate change or through human destruction. These animals and plants that are being forced into extinction have been evolving over millions and millions of years to get to where they are today. And for them to be just destroyed in a matter of years by ignorance and short-sightedness makes me very angry. Antelope about this big. But this is obviously his part of the mountain, so maybe we put a camera trap here. And a new new species of reedbuck, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there's somebody inside. Yeah. Little fellow. Have you got something, Aaron? We've got a musk shrew, yes. Hey! That could be our first new species. Super. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, I was very our happy. First decent